My name is Linda Jones and I am a Juanita J. Craft Artist Recipient for 2022. And my project has to do with oral history. I will be uh, conducting oral history conversations with people uh, from South Dallas about South Dallas. I have a bit of a history of South Dallas, just as somebody who's uh, a professional observer, I guess, and a writer. I was a newspaper reporter. I worked at the um, Dallas Morning News. So uh, I made it my business to come through here to do stories out of the community. There are um, oftentimes, particularly in the media, there are you know, particular people that are tapped a lot to comment about different communities and things. And oftentimes it's because they're uh, visibly involved, very involved, but there are those hidden voices in the community that have stories to tell. And oftentimes they're too busy doing what they do. Um, that's not in the public eye, uh, but it doesn't mean that their stories aren't valuable. So I hope to have a mix of that in this sampling of uh, voices that I'll have, that I'll be recording. I'll just be getting a sampling, I say a sampling of it because it, this kind of thing has a domino effect. Somebody you know, knows you want to do oral history. Uh, what often happens is there's a recommendation, oh, you need to talk to this person and that person, and it can be massive. My interest is in generating that interest in it so people can uh, be inspired to do this uh, on their own but to hopefully let them see how valuable these stories are. The process will be getting people to come in and um, share their reflections and recollections of life in South Dallas or uh, things, the way things used to be or the way things are. Uh, they'll have an opportunity to sort of flow and share their own personal experience. I will have them either, I will be interviewing them one-on-one -on -one, or we'll set up conversations, which is what I prefer to between two individuals so they can speak to each other and share their stories. It may be relatives or friends and uh, they will once again share uh, their stories. It will be recorded uh, for posterity, it will become, those recordings will become part of the um, Library of Congress Folk Life um, Center archives, so they can be accessible at any time. There will be some standard questions that I'll have for uh, the interviewees so they can um, really say whatever comes to their mind, maybe, it, maybe about childhood, growing up, or going to school, um, what the city's, the community's like. Uh, it can go, who knows where it will go, but there'll be some of those questions. But I also want to make sure that uh, some of the conversation has to do with South Dallas. That interest is because this is a community that's changing like so many of the communities are. And, you know, there may be buildings that used to be there that aren't there anymore, but they're in, they're in the minds of the people who grew up and lived there. So I want to capture those images uh, for posterity. There's a lot of moving parts to this. You know, when someone sees an oral history interview, if it's video, they see the people talking together, audio, they hear the voices. And it, well, it's supposed to appear seamless and sound seamless, but behind the scenes, there's a whole lot of logistics uh, that go on to uh, bring this together in a way that it would be useful. So that's what I've discovered. I thought about, and actually I did put a notice out inviting people who are interested in being part of this and being interviewed to get in touch with me. And I pulled that in a few days because I had a few and I said, you know, this could be massive. I think I may need to scale it a bit because based on research that I've done in prepping for this, it takes 
it can take up to 30 hours to have one, you know, have together one oral history piece. That's why um, I said, well, maybe I better <laughs> calm down, you know, scale it down. <laughs> because it, what the plan is, is to get, um, take pieces of the extensive interviews. They'll be up to an hour, 40 minutes to an hour and take samplings to put it together to present something to the community to hear and see. I believe my work fits into this moment in time in that Unfortunately, there have been efforts, passionate efforts right now to stifle some of uh, our stories, particularly the stories, stories that have to do with race. And although the oral history stories that I'll be collecting won't be specifically be about race, but there will be primarily from people of color, African-Americans, uh, uh, primarily considering the demographics of this community, but uh, also uh, Latinos that I'll be approaching and their business owners who are from other cultures who are here. So I uh, think, hope, I'm hoping that this will be a contribution to keeping those stories coming because there's sort of a timelessness about um, storytelling. We tell stories about the here and now, but they later become history. Well, my hope is through this experience that I will be tapping into the libraries of the minds of people like Donald Payton, who's considered widely known here as sort of the unofficial historian of Black Dallas. And, uh, other people who may be lesser known in terms of their, um, there may not be media people necessarily who've been in the media a lot, but there are people who've been in the community a lot and they know the community. So my hope is to gather uh, stories from them for posterity. I like to say that it is an honor to be part of this project. Um, I um, am, my understanding is that I am the only person who's not a visual artist in it, but I'm hoping that I will uh, be able to paint pictures in people's minds from the stories that people tell.